presentation that looks at the wars of liberation in Central and South America, as well as the Caribbean, in the early part of the 19th century. All the wars of liberation begin with this guy. This is Napoleon. And essentially, a lot of the independence movements being pretty much kind of inspired by the uh, development of the United States are also impacted when uh, this French emperor takes over the Iberian Peninsula of Spain. And when that happens, many of the South American Creoles start to rise up and move towards this pseudo Spanish crown. So, uh, the resistance of French rule is kind of where everything begins. The people of Madrid rebelled in 1808, creating these governing councils called juntas. Um, many of them tried to take over provincial control of, of the area, but they were not successful. Um, but this ultimately led to a, a widespread liberal movement to establish a limited monarchy in 1812. And then those in the Americas, however, wanted to exercise their own regional power because there was no longer a ultimate absolute king to control them. With that resistance, it created a lot of political instability, which can be focused really in Argentina and Buenos Aires, where you have a lot of these small juntas kind of splitting from the church, um, basically trying to move towards more secular educational uh, juntas, as well as ideas of freedoms, open trade. Um, the differences of the economic interests are a big part of what causes many of the conflicts between the juntas on the coastal regions where you obviously had a little bit more wealth because of trade. Um, and ultimately this led to a, a tremendous factionalism called the Rio de la Plata. And uh, ultimately in Argentina, you get a split between people who were centralists who want provinces um, to start conforming to this very centralized control in Buenos Aires, and then the Federalists who basically wanted to make sure to collect uh, their own interests. And so that's where a lot of Paraguay and Uruguay's power comes from. So we're going to look specifically now at some of the regions and why there was uh, so much of a division between the Federalists and the Centralists. So let's start, uh, first of all, with um, some of the Federalists. Uh, places like Upper Peru, which are going to be um, eventually areas of Peru and Bolivia, uh, were very hostile to the idea of having this ultimate control from Buenos Aires. Um, they basically started to kind of liberate themselves, uh, abandoning a lot of the customs of that control from the centralized city. Uh, and what came along with this were a lot of political promises to the Mare Indians and a lot of the former black slave groups that were in a lot of these um, more rural and in and, and places where there was widespread agriculture and large minings. Um, so the idea was that by giving these people freedom, it would get them to uh, gain more control over these uh, different economic regions. Um, in Uruguay, you have a, a country that's very close to Argentina. Um, they led kind of their own independence movement with uh, the event of the Grito de Sasancio, uh, revolting against that, again, control over Buenos Aires. Uh, in Paraguay, you have a very different kind of movement, very s similar in the sense that they also wanted to move themselves away from that power of Buenos Aires under the leadership of Dr. Jose de Francia. Um, and, you know, kind of taking themselves from uh, that landlocked region away from uh, Argentine control. Now in Chile, you have kind of a different situation there on the Pacific side of the ocean. They have a very um, divided movement, um, which kind of leads with some of uh, the different personalities and leaders like Miguel Carrera, uh, Juan Martinez de Rosas, or Bernardo Higgins, O'Higgins. Um, they were defeated, and the Royalists actually crushed their opposition in 1814. However, um, this would be kind of reinvigorated once again under the leadership of San Martin. Jose de San Martin um, was supported to lead an army up the Pacific coast. Uh, he basically used forces from uh, Argentinian uh, and African slave forces to defeat the Royalists in 1817 um, in Chacabuco and then Maipu in 1818. So several years later, you get this kind of movement by San Martin to liberate some of these countries from that 
last bit of royalist control. Um, but much of Northern South America and into Central America still are under royalist control. Um, and a lot of that had to do with the division that occurred between San Martin and what was going on in the areas of Peru, Peru and Venezuela. So basically, uh, Peru is under the leadership of um, an administration that is essentially very royal and loyalist to Spain. Uh, the Peruvians were very proud of their role as kind of the preservers of the Spanish rule. However, under the leadership of Simon Bolivar, uh, he tries to liberate these areas of Peru and Venezuela into independence. They use uh, Haitian assistance in 1816, which allows him to gain more support. And eventually at Carbabobo, he is given basically a, a major victory and then eventually patriot victory in Venezuela and Nugrata. Um, Eventually, we get a situation that happens in Spain that leads to even more widespread independence throughout South America when uh, 14,000 soldiers mutiny in Cadiz after being ordered to Argentina and Uruguay to fight uh, against the, uh, the um, rebellion. Um, and basically, this forced King Ferdinand uh, to renounce uh, the idea of absolute power in the monarchy and a resurgence of that liberal movement that happened in 1812. This will ultimately lead to uh, kind of the end of independence um, for, uh, or the, the, the ending of Spanish control over the continent of South America. Uh, this is all very much epitomized by the meeting at Guayaquil between Bolivar and San Martin in 1822, where they met, no one really knows what was said, uh, but San Martin left and said, there's not enough room in Peru for Bolivar or me. He left the meeting. Bolivar was left in control of mostly uh, in the northern part of South America. Uh, but ultimately, this ends Spanish control in South America. They did remain an imperial power, a colonial power uh, throughout the Caribbean as well as in uh, the Pacific. Uh, but this was kind of the symbolic end of Spanish control in South America. All right, so uh, to end this, we're gonna start looking at uh, specific parts of the wars. There's a lot of information here, but we're gonna really start looking at the ideas of chapters five and six and the idea of heritage starting uh, next week. But before we get that, I want you to look at chapter two and try to focus on an area of these charts. And we're gonna actually complete one of these in class so that you can get a very detailed idea of one of these major wars that happens uh, towards liberation in South America.